Welcome back to the third segment of Newbie uh, Introduction to Espresso. Uh, this section we're going to cover really what is probably the most important part of your espresso ensemble, the grinder. Uh, joining us is uh, Philip, our, our volunteer newbie, and we're going to talk about why grinders are important, uh, how to adjust them, how to save time when using them. So before we do that though, uh, some of the forum people, they ask, uh, what's going on with Philip? I mean, did he, uh, did he, did he learn to like espresso outside of his home, or did he just go back to his old Starbucks ways? Nope. Uh, we've uh, we've actually what it's been maybe a month and a half. It's been that long. It's, it's been, been a long long. okay. Yeah, it's maybe a month, and uh, we've been to Starbucks once. Whoa. One time. <laughs> One time. Yeah, and and that was out of necessity. We weren't around. We just wanted a coffee, and, and we were there. And um, yeah, it's. Uh, uh, I, as I told Dan before, I'm a little bit uh, upset at him now because uh, now my ignorance is gone and I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm now I'm trapped into this world, I think, uh, in for some uh, some punishment. So. Well, that's fine. I mean, that's a good thing. I mean, it it is. sometimes, it is. you know, learning is, is, is a painful process, right? But uh, so right. there is a benefit. One thing, though, I'm interested to hear is that when I gave you a, a loaner espresso machine yep. kit, I dialed it in before you left. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this segment's about grinders. I'm kind of curious. Uh, did you notice? What did you notice? Uh, you know, as the weeks passed on and you went through different coffees, uh, what 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 did you notice? So the the for what it was worth, I, I don't know why I thought this, but I just thought that the finer the grind, the better the coffee was going to be. Uh -huh. So as I was grinding, I was like, well, you know, let me turn up a little bit finer, and I didn't really know what I was doing, and it got to a point where I was trying to do you know the espresso. And just nothing was coming out. Sure. Yeah. And and I was like, oh no, I broke the machine. <laughs> I was like, what did I do? So then I started thinking it was the machine. I was cleaning out the, uh, I think the basket is what it's called. Sure. I mean, that's, I thought that was clogged. I just really didn't know what I was doing. And uh, um, that was actually when I called you. And you know like, that was intentional, by the way. I don't sure it was. And I was and I called you and I was like, oh man, how am I going to explain to him that I broke his machine? <laughs> But to, you know, then I understood that yeah, I just had the, the ground too fine. So then I started playing around with that, and I knew that at that point, then I could sort of play around with it and sure. see timing as far as bruising. And then, of course, then it would just pour out really quick, and I was just trying to find what I thought was decent. But that was the biggest thing that I didn't expect. Well, that's great because that's exactly what we want to cover here. Okay. Is uh, what you were experiencing was is as coffee ages, as it you know loses some of its essential oils. Um, the grind setting changes. And if you change coffee, some coffee beans are hard, some are soft, yeah. it changes the way the grind setting is. And a lot of newbies, they struggle because uh, they don't know, you know which way should the grind set, and do I pay attention to the timing, do I pay attention to the volume, and they're all really confused. They go through a lot of coffee, which may be expensive, they become frustrated, yeah. and then they end up on a forum like Home Barista, yeah. you know, irritated and such. So sure. our goal here in this session is to give you the basic mechanics of dialing in any grinder. Awesome. Okay? Awesome. So uh, before we get to that though, we're going to review really quickly some, some basics about grinders here. And, and here I have an ensemble of, of grinders uh, going from, you know, kind of the consumer entry level ones. Uh, from Barazza, uh, the two, the uh, Virtuoso, and uh, the step up from that, the Barrio. And then moving on to commercial grinders. This is a Super Jolly by a Mazer, and then a Compact K10. So these are professional grade commercial grinders that you might see in a cafe. Um, unfortunately, they don't fit under typical uh, consumer uh, home uh, cabinets, mm -hmm. and so without you know mini hoppers and whatnot. And so a lot of people gravitate towards the, the home version of these because it's just more practical for yeah. that. But there are advantages to the commercial ones. Uh, as a class though, the two that we see here are what are called flat burr grinders, which are the first three here, and then conical grinders. Now without getting into a bunch of you know geekiness about what is flat versus burr, the long and short of it is is that you know generally speaking professionals and aficionados agree that the conical burr grinders are perhaps more forgiving. They require less jockeying of the grind setting. Um, it, it's not uncommon for people who even pick up a grinder as, as professional as this, to, as they stay with the, the, the hobby for a long time, they invariably pick up some sort of conical grinder simply because they require less adjustments and, and they reveal a different flavor profile. 
that's you know kind of a quick introduction uh, to grinders and, the, and the, that the, the span that they cover. The next thing we did though, you probably noticed next to you, and uh, let me go ahead and move this on over here. You probably noticed next to you uh, several grind uh, samples. I prepared this before you arrived, and the purpose of this is to kind of solve the problem that you were talking about. Remember you were saying sometime to choke, sometime to gush, right? Mm -hmm. And really what this exercise is about is helping you get to the point where uh, you're in the ballpark. Okay. So you know, a typical pour speed for an espresso is generally 20 to 30 seconds. Okay. Uh, it's unusual for an espresso that pours in 15 seconds to really have really turn out all that well. They tend to be bland, sour, etc. Um, it might go over 30 seconds from time to time, but generally speaking is if you're within that, you know, 20 to 35 seconds sort of range, okay. you can then get into a fine. That's all this exercise is about, is first getting you into that range. Okay. In the next video, if we can get that scheduled within the next month or so, yeah. what we'll do is it will say, okay, now that I'm in the ballpark, how can I refine that by taste? How can I tweak that? Because remember you were talking about, oh, if I grind it finer, it might taste you know, richer or it might taste something like that. You were really asking the right question, but you, really, you didn't have the guidance at that point to say what was the right way to do that. Right. So we're going to talk about that in another video. For this one, we're just going to focus on getting in the ballpark because this is a newbie introduction. Awesome. So um, first of all, uh, this is a way of saving coffee. Because a lot of times when people who are new to this, they'll try to adjust the grinder to hit a certain time and volume uh -huh. metric, right? Yep. Well, you can do that, that's fine. But every time you do it, you're going through you know, coffee at you know, 50 cents a, a shot or whatever. You uh -huh. know? So you, it gets expensive to, to play like that. Uh -huh. This will get you in that 20 to 30 second range. So first, what I want you to do is, is just kind of give this a feel and rub it between your fingers and tell me what that feels like. Um, almost like pepper. You know, like of course. Great. Yep. In fact, this is this is kind of what t people would typically use for like French press. Okay. Okay. So, and that's why I set this aside. Is that that gives you kind of the extreme. Okay. Now here, what I did is I prepared three different espresso grind settings. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can think of this as you know uh, slow, on time, and fast. Mm -hmm. Right. And a lot. So a lot of times people ask, you know, how much adjustment do I have? And if you look at these different grinders, it turns out the espresso zone is, is pretty small. Uh, it can only be an adjustment of maybe around a quarter inch from, from start to finish. It's, it's a really relatively small adjustment. If you find yourself racking the, the adjustment back and forth, mm -hmm. that's fine if you're making French press and switching to espresso. But if you're in an espresso zone, Realistically, you know, you might go maybe up to a half inch if you're really pulling lungos. Okay. So now what we're going to do is, is I'd like you to go ahead and give those a feel and see if you can tell the difference between them. Okay. So and I'll do the same thing. Now, this is the, uh, okay, there's, there's the, uh, the coarsest one. Ooh, yeah, that's, that's, okay. Okay, so. Yep. You feel the difference now? Yep. So this, this one, I think it's, it's pretty obvious, in fact. Yeah. The funny thing is, is that that was only an adjustment of about an eighth of an inch oh, wow. in both directions. So this was spot on, eighth of an inch finer, uh, eighth of an inch coarser. And here, it's, it's almost like, a, it's not like talcum powder and like that. You see, I feel it's got a certain grittiness yeah. to it. Yeah. See, that what you could do is when you rub it between your fingers is that you should feel the grittiness, but also you can feel a bit of moisture. Did you notice yeah, that? Yeah, I noticed that, yeah. And a lot of times when people buy stale coffee, that's one of the dead giveaways, is that when you grind it like this and you rub it between your fingers, yeah. there's no moisture. That moisture isn't actually water, it's oil. Oil okay. evaporates, you see. Okay. And so, as it gets finer and finer, that, that sensation becomes more noticeable. It sticks together, it clumps, mm -hmm. right? So. If you feel this one, you can say, okay, uh, that one's got very little grittiness, a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. I, I describe it as uh, like white pepper. Mm. I don't know. Do you have a better, a better example of something like? Well, the first thing that came to my mind was just the moisture. You can mm -hmm. feel the moisture difference in the Original. Version. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay, that's good. And so what we're going to do is, uh, once we get done playing with this and making ourselves messy <laughs> here, what I'm going to do is, is that um, I'm going to prepare two different baskets. Okay. okay. And I'm going to intentionally have one either too fine okay. or too coarse. Okay. And I'm going to challenge you to tell me which one did I do. Oh boy. 
and then we'll pull the shot to see if you were right. Okay. So stand by for just a few minutes while I uh, prepare those two and, and see if uh, Philip gets it right on the first try. <laughs> so we're back and I prepared uh, two grind samples for Phil to try. Uh, mm -hmm. One here that is the dialed in, ready to go espresso and one that's not. Okay. So go ahead and give it that field test we were talking about and tell me if you can uh, identify the, the outlier. And the difference is going to be the fineness of the grind, is that correct? Correct. Okay. Well, I'm not going to give you any hints. I mean, you okay. should be able to, the question is, remember the one that was in the middle of yep. the three? Yep. You're trying to identify that one. Okay. And this was the one on the left, or this was the one on the right, and the other three. Okay. So, uh... So are you looking, uh, you're trying, you're trying to look so, at the visual feel, aren't you? Exactly. Before I look at it, I'm trying to look at, because I remember before when they were laid out there, right. I could tell, maybe I just was pulling this out, but it looked like the finer one was finer just because the texture is the way it clumped together a little bit. It, it also like looks it. darker, doesn't it? It does. It's yeah. a different color, um, almost like a um, sort of confectionery sugar type right. clump to Okay, it. sure. Um, where, and then you could see how there was a little less of that going through as it was uh, more coarse. So that was the first thing I was looking at. Um, I made it a little harder on you. I could have had the three up so you could spot it, but we're not going to give you any clues quite like that. Okay, so there's number one, sample number one, sample number two. Now you, you can't tell there's a difference, I hope. I can, I think. I think. Okay, that's fair enough. Uh, okay, so well, let's first from, say from the look, this looked fine. Okay, from, fair enough. From the feel. <laughs> really? <laughs> this looks fine, yeah. Okay, so here we go. So let me see if I can kind of check myself. So what about your moisture thing? Remember we talked about that? Yeah, yeah. A little bit harder than you thought it was going to be, huh? That was a little bit That's harder. fair. That's fair. My first, my first instinct that this is fine. Okay, okay. So what we're going to do is that uh, Philip has chosen this one. We're going to go ahead now and pull a shot and see if you were right. Okay. Uh, so being that this one is finer than this, I'm not sure which one of these was the middle one. Let me, okay. Let me clarify. Yeah, I just compare these two right against each other. Fair enough. Okay. okay. Let's go ahead and uh, these baskets line up to that. Okay. And uh, we'll go with it. Okay. okay. Uh, you picked this one and Correct. said it was... Fine. Correct. So that's the one we're doing. That's first. what we're doing first. Okay. okay. Gotcha. And remember, we talked about. Uh, I'm getting down here to, to take a look at the bottom of this pour. You can tell by the color and the shape of the cone. Now watch as you see if it starts to finish out. See how it pulls up like that? And so we are about. Uh, about 25, 27 seconds. Okay. Which, uh, which is in the range. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is, that's fair. And now we're going to try the same thing, but this time we're going to try another one. Okay. Get another cup. Excuse me. Just one sec. Should have had that already, but went. Okay. We're not going to worry about temperature. Normally, if you were using you know, an espresso machine like this, need to wait a little bit for it to recover. In between? Right, okay. right. Like, you know, a machine like this, even though you see a PID setting here, yeah. this says, you know, 200 degrees or whatever, yeah. um, a smaller boiler needs recovery time. Okay. Typically, 90 seconds to as okay. long as two minutes. Okay. If you do them too closely, what will happen is the temperature will drop like a rock towards uh, the end, and it'll result in sh sh shots that are, are sour or dull or something okay. like that. So, we're not going to worry about that, because right now we're just interested in timing, right. so it won't matter. So let's go ahead and give this a second whirl. Okay. And uh, I can already tell which way this is going to go. So, okay, I cut off the top of the cup at 17 seconds. And uh, so, congratulations. Awesome. <laughs> uh, you correctly identified uh, the right one. And you can see that I did make it, by the way, I did make it coarser. Okay. Uh, to be able to pour more quickly. Yeah. And you see that we changed from around 25, 27 seconds to uh, right around 20, maybe even a little less. Yep. And that was an adjustment on this dial 
of about uh, about that much, only about not uh, much at all. Not really. Yeah. But the see thing is, is that kind of shows you that was if, if the if the one shot was the middle, mm -hmm. we moved kind of the other extreme. Mm -hmm. If we would have moved the same direction, the opposite mm -hmm. uh, direction, mm -hmm. it would have you know cut off the similar sort of about seven to ten seconds off that. Mm -hmm. You had asked during the break about uh, you know comparing a grinder like this to the one that you've been using. You've been using a Barazzo Vario, right? right? Right. So when you were you were explaining in the last video, you turned it to the left, right. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, what is he talking about? But I sort of assumed you meant the finer, coarser setting on whatever grinder you're using. Right. Well, the, the point to walk away from is is that the, the adjustment is, is actually quite small. Like the Vario has uh, two adjustments. It has macro on one side mm -hmm. and micro on the other. Mm -hmm. So the one is where it says like espresso, French press, etc. Correct. Realistically, there's practically one setting that's correct for espresso. Two notches down. Most people seem to be comfortable in that range. And then the macro is where you're, you're adjusting it. I don't recall the exact ratio. It might have been like 10 to 1 or something yeah. like that. One thing nice about the Vario is, is that you can set it to the macro for espresso mm -hmm. and then fool with the micro, the full range of it, oh, wow. will cover what we're talking about. Okay. And so like if you were to go all the way to the bottom and all the way to the top on the Vario, that would probably cover a range of, I don't know, 10 or 15 seconds or thereabouts, right? Okay. So, you know, it covers very much the same range we're talking about here with those little Just adjustments. Little team. Gotcha. That's why a lot of okay. people really like that grinder. That's yeah. one thing that's very newbie friendly because once you get to that, you know, macro setting correct, you can pretty much, you know, fiddle with the micro and dial it in pretty much yeah. how you want. So. Okay, that makes a lot of sense because when I was using them, I had the macro at espresso about two notches down where you would set it. But with the micro, I was only playing around with a couple of notches, right. maybe four notches in the range of, you know, maybe this much. Well, keep I in mind, though, that know. you were using really nice, fresh coffee. Yeah. Right? You yeah. see, if, you know, if you were, if I was giving you coffee that was, you know, at its, its peak. Right. As if that coffee had gotten older, instead of being, you know, three, seven days, okay. they had been, you know, 12 days. Mm -hmm. You would have started moving finer and finer along that ring. Okay. Uh, you see, so or if you switch types of coffee, yeah. some coffees, especially uh, you know single origins, yeah. typically will acquire a different setting, which is a, a far different from what you're usually seeing. So typically, the staler the coffee, the finer the setting. Correct. Okay. Correct. Because they're losing that oil. You want to bring more of that oil. Out. Well, it's not so much the oil is is that the amount of oil affects the extraction rate. Okay. Now we're starting to get into an advanced topic, uh, or I'm more advanced, advanced topic. Guy. That's good, that's good. And so what we're gonna do is uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna stop it now and you can look forward to the next installment where we're going to look, uh, what did we say was on tap? Oh, diagnostics, that's right. We're gonna look at diagnostics, we're gonna turn to the questions like uh, Philip was just posing. So look forward to the next in the installment of introduct, uh, newbie introduction to espresso. Thank you.